Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I'll be brief on this proposal to uh, subject legislators and uh, our staff to implicit bias and cultural competency training uh, every two years. Uh, on a few grounds, I'd, I'd like to oppose it, propose something better uh, to the body. Um, the first objection I have to it, Mr. Speaker, is somewhat tongue in cheek, uh, but I question the sincerity of the proposal, frankly, uh, from the majority party. Um, many of us will recall in the last session, at least twice, Members of the majority party suggested that um, members of the body who didn't possess a vagina should not be allowed to speak on certain issues that come before the legislature. That seemed to me to be pretty explicit bias and discrimination, Mr. Speaker. And before we get on to something called implicit bias, maybe we should walk before we can run and stamp out that explicit bias and discrimination that the majority party apparently endorsed in the last session. Uh, but there are more, I think, serious reasons to, to oppose the bill. Uh, the next one is it's not very effective. I mean, if you look at Scientific American and um, many business journals, uh, social science analyses of implicit bias training, uh, they say it doesn't really work, that people may become aware of some uh, implicit bias that they might have, but it doesn't change any behavior. Um, and they can't figure out how to make it work because people are hardwired in certain ways and uh, this training doesn't seem to achieve the effects that are desired. So why we would subject uh, ourselves, each other, and our staff to training that doesn't work is, is beyond me. Uh, but the third uh, reason, Mr. Speaker, is I, I, just would, I would propose to the body uh, to uh, choose better things to do with our time, uh, elevate ourselves. I, I don't think that implicit bias and cultural competency training is, is worthy of who we are frankly, uh, as Americans. We stand in, as inheritors of one of the greatest legacies of equality and opportunity that the world has ever known. We were founded with incredible words from geniuses of their time in the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among those rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That was a clarion call to freedom and equality in 1776. It remains so in 2022. And I suggest if we all refresh ourselves on something like that, uh, more frequently, uh, concerns about implicit bias and cultural competency would be less of a concern. The, the themes and the establishment, the principles that the Declaration of Independence so proudly pronounced 250 years ago have been running through our history, Mr. Speaker, since then. And if you look no further than, it was almost 60 years ago now, the I Have a Dream speech, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. referenced the heritage that is the Declaration of Independence. And so that is our birthright as Americans, black, white, green, purple, it doesn't matter what color you are, the Declaration of Independence is our legacy, is our birthright. And he called the country back to those founding principles. And he said, if these principles aren't being respected, it's like having a check and trying to draw it on insufficient funds. And he called on our country to put more money in the bank uh, so that we could draw on that legacy. Mr. Speaker, I propose to you that as Americans, we are worthy of so much more than kind of the latest fad in social science that isn't very reliable and hasn't been proven to work. We can read these documents, we can remind ourselves who we are as Americans, of our commitment to equality that is from the very beginning of our country uh, until uh, through the 19th century, to the 20th century, through the 21st century, Mr. Speaker. And so, uh, Mr. Speaker, I would propose to amend and send back A1719 for purposes of amendment. The amendment would be, instead of implicit bias training, let's all read the Declaration of Independence and the I Have a Dream speech every two years and certify that to the leaders of this house. I think that would go a lot further than any uh, social science fad to encouraging the equal treatment of each other, our staff, and the people of the state of New Jersey. Mr. Speaker, I move the, the bill back for uh, the second reading for amendment.